Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Burt Wagner and I'm excited to be able to share with you today's DBA Fundamentals quick tip. The main session is about to begin in a few minutes, but before that, I want to talk about Sargeability. The term Sarge stands for search argument. In the context of SQL Server, a query is sargeable when SQL Server can pull the data it needs straight out of an index, right, without needing to transform it or do any kind of row-by-row -row computations. And having our queries be sargeable is something we want to strive for because that's going to allow SQL Server to get the data it needs out of an index with as minimal extra work as possible. So to get a better idea of what makes a query sargeable, let's look at this example. In this query, we're trying to get a count of all the rows where the creation date column is set to a value on August 4th, 2009. Our first attempt at this is converting our date time column on our table to be a character string of just the date portion so that it matches what we're writing on the right side of the equal sign. We also have a second version of this query which gives us the same exact results, but our where statement is a little different. In this example, we're trying to find all the rows after midnight on the 4th, but before midnight on the 5th. Now one of these queries is sargeable and will use index seeks to get the data it needs, while the other is not. We can figure out which is which by taking a look at the number of logical reads for each query. You'll see that the first query has much worse performance because they had to read over 8,000 pages of data to be able to get that count that we requested. The second query, on the other hand, only had to do 14 logical reads. If we check the execution plan, we'll see why this happens. Our first query scans our index, which contains almost 4 million rows. For each one of those rows, it needs to compute our conversion to a char 10, you know, date string representation and then do its comparison. On the other hand, our second query is able to seek directly to the rows that fall in between that date range of between the 4th and the 5th. That second query doesn't need to perform any kinds of transformations or conversions, and so it only returns the 4,318 rows that fall within that specific date range. We say our first query is not sargeable because of all these row-by-row -row transformations, these computations that SQL Server has to make to be able to find the data that we requested. Our second query is sargeable because SQL Server can seek directly to the rows it needs. It doesn't need to perform any extra calculations. And as a general rule, anytime you do a transformation, whether it's a data type conversion or some kind of other scalar function, uh, on the column side of an equation in your where statement, it's probably gonna make your query not sargeable. It's gonna force SQL Server to compute some value, do an index scan to be able to do your comparisons and filter out your rows. And this not only occurs when we specifically add some kind of function or transformation to the column side of our predicate, uh, but it also can happen implicitly if we have some kind of data type conversion, right? The key here is that we should be defining our data types of our columns accurately so we don't get SQL Server having to perform these types of implicit conversions which will kill uh, its ability to be able to seek to the data that it needs. So to sum it up, we want our queries to run efficiently and quickly as possible and we do that by making sure that our where statements, our predicates, are sargeable. And what that means is to basically avoid any kind of transformation logic that will force SQL Server to compute some value row by row, preventing it from being able to do an index seek. So thanks for watching today's quick tip. Our featured session should begin momentarily.